All right, let's go. All right, all right, all right. What do we got going today, Tim? Well, just wanted to say it's Sunday. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. That's right. Yes, and I was in a pipe band. Uh, I was a tenor drum. Cindy, you know what a tenor drum is? Tenor drum. That's the one that doesn't make a lot of noise. <laughs> No, it's bigger than the snare drum, and it doesn't make as much you noise. You guys were kind of the show-offs. We were show-offs, and, you, and we had the beautiful, uh, I was the quartermaster. So the tenor drums, though, like you were walking down, you would you had your drumsticks, and you would kind of, uh, well, you, you know, were in sync, and you were kind of like twirling them. We were the show-offs, and you know what the funny, funny thing about the thing is? It took people five years to learn how to do bagpipes, and I remember, I remember the dog, every time... I'd start the bagpipe music. The dog would start barking. You were practicing. So you kind of, like, when you were doing the tenor drums, you people see them, they're kind of, they have, like, the little crocheted. Yeah, Grandma used to crochet the little white yeah, uh, th- yeah. uh, things that covered the ends of the... Like, Sweet. did you guys have to practice? Like, did you have a routine that you yeah, had to practice? Yeah, we had to practice every Tuesday. Yeah, so, but the tenor drums, when you were kind of twirling your drumsticks, you had to have, you all had to be in sync. Oh, yeah, there was four of us. We had to be in perfect harmony, as they say. And we did. We 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 were in, in perfect harmony. Yeah, because I, I kind of can't. I guess we. I guess you guys did do St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I can remember those were. We used to go for a picnic after every parade, and the competition above the uh, the competition among the bands was was unbelievable. Oh, and, and all. Know, yeah, the, and then remember how exciting it was when the one time the the bass drum guy Tim didn't show up. Now you're talking when the bass drum. Oh, yeah, the big bass drum you got. It was really big. So finally yeah. you can hit a drum yeah, fun, the, hard and everything. Yeah. And, I just love that bass drum. And I, and I, funny thing is, the week before, I had it painted on there and it was beautiful. Rampart Lion yeah, on there. It was yeah, it was a Rampart Lion and it was City of Rochester pipe pan and all that stuff. And I... I was banging away there when I was I was I was having fun, boy, and I just I just loved it. I and I got to the end of the parade and gee, all the red stuff all over it. So you you thought you thought the paint started to run. I got, I started paint started to run, and here it was my blood, and I had white gloves on, and I'd worn through the gloves, and it was my blood all over the stuff, boy. I'll tell you, <laughs> I had, I tell you one thing. I just love that bass drum. I could have played that thing forever. So, Dad, on the Twitter, we did a poll, and it was asked, who is the best enforcer in the NHL? We had we uh, had a question of that, so we put that up and to 7,000 votes on 7, it. 7,000 votes. And um, Bob Probert was number one. Dave Semenko was number two. Tiger Williams was number three. And Terry O'Reilly was number four. We had but another 100 people write in who they thought. different. different well, I'll things. tell you one thing. Probert. I, I, I'd have to agree with people with the probert because he didn't care about anybody. He didn't, and and he didn't have any tie downs. That's what I don't didn't, didn't understand. Yeah, yeah. We had him on the Grapevine show, um, and uh, we I think the two biggest shows we had for, were the uh, for the Grapevine shows were Bobby Orr and Bob Probert because we the shows were we taped the shows in our restaurants and we used to get audiences to come in and watch I remember Bobby who, when when he was there it was just jammed and he was you know signing autographs signing autographs and uh, he kept the eye on this one guy and this guy this guy come to him and said I want to I want to you know wanted the autograph he says get out of here and he knew he was a guy that, and and he he used to pay kids for five dollars to go up and get Bobby Orr's autograph. Yeah, it was Boy. like a collector and a seller, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boy, Bobby hated those guys. So uh, we had uh, um, we had so you know you had to get reservations because we only had doing that the room the the room where we were shooting in the bar wasn't that big. So uh, the one waitress who was kind of taking the reservations, I remember she didn't know much about hockey. She says, who's this Probert guy? She says, he's like the Pope. Everybody wants to see him. And he was the nicest guy. And, and, and you know, he was, uh, he was in that uh, thing that McLean was in. What was that? What was that? What was that? What was that called? Battle of the Blades. Oh, yeah. He right? was in the Battle of the Blades. And, uh, and everybody, everybody, I want to see Ty Domi and Probert. Battle of the Blades for people in the U.S. that don't know it. It was retired Canadian hockey players figure skating with with female figure skaters yeah 
And so they had Ty and, and Ty, Ty Domi and, Probert. and Bob, Bob Probert. So it was like the rematch, and the, but it was going to yeah. be on figures. So they promoted it for, a, for six months. And he was the first guy off. Yeah, it was the first guy they put it and off with Probert. He, 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 you know, you know, you think well, Ty you, cheated. That's why. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, yeah, Ty cheated because they wanted the guys to wear figure skates, and it's tough for the hockey players because they, they, the they had got the toe picks and they kept falling. <laughs> so Ty just said, "Screw it, I'm not doing that." Ty practiced in the figure skates, and then when it was about to really go on TV, he switched to his hockey skates. Yeah, yeah but still, they had other contestants. You think, you know, some guy that we didn't know, we got to get rid of. But the first guy they got rid of was Probert, and they. You know, nobody yeah, wanted to watch that, it. That's what, that's what everybody was tuning in for, to see Probert. Well, it was done by CBC. What do you yeah. want? Oh, well. No yeah. bottom line. Yeah. They don't have <laughs> that anymore. Some. So I remember when Probert was on. I remember the other guest was uh, Dino Cicerelli. And what a contrast between Dino Cicerelli and Bob Probert. And yeah. All. And, well, uh, what, what, there was something about uh, Dino. The, yeah. So I didn't want he, any... So the, the show, was we, we were going to, we were doing Dino Cicerelli and Bob Probert. So uh, I think Dino went first, and he brought an inflatable dinosaur. Because yeah, when he I, was, I remember. Because when he was in Minnesota, they called him Dino the Dinosaur. I don't know why they called him a dinosaur, but Dino the Dinosaur. So he had it, and he really cherished this. You could see he brought it on the show, and yeah. he was showing Well, he everybody. probably didn't have many. It was left over from his playing days, yeah, so he so, probably, this was well, one. Well, whatever. So between shows, you know, they're kind of chit-chatting, and Bob Probert picked up the dinosaur, and it popped. <laughs> and, boy, and he didn't do anything to it. No, it just, he, it just p- popped when he picked it up. And boy, did Dino get mad. And he started, he started. you know how long I've had that? I wanted to have that for my kids. What would you do that for? And Bob, you just saying, I didn't do anything. I just picked <laughs> it up. And then Dino went a little bit too much. Well, <laughs> you see Bob kind of look at him. And, yeah. and, and Probert kind of looked at him as if to say, you do, you do, you've said enough. And and uh, he backed off. He didn't say anything more. But Dino would have. Dino, yeah, Dino, yeah. There might have been another fight in the bar. <laughs> okay, Dad, we're going to take some questions, and they're great all questions, right. all right. And this is from D Wings Nine, and he says, "Grapes, there was a lot made of that little he got, like he says little fight that little fight between Raymond and Sherrod in the Red Wings practice last week." And he has two questions. Were you ever in a fight with one of your teammates in practice? And did any of the Bruins get into it on one of your practices? Well, first of all, I'll talk about Millbury and O'Reilly. They got into it, and they were, and we, I was at one end. I'll never forget this. I was at one end of the rink, and they were at the other end. They were in a corner. <laughs> and they were really throwing them. They were, they, there was no, they really hated Yeah, like the, 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 Thing with the Ryman and Sherrod, Sh- uh, Sh- they were just kind of pushing and shoving. Yeah, they were just pushing and shoving. They didn't, they didn't really fight. Did they ever go at it? And there was blood on the glass. Did it you was... ever find out what got them upset with no, each other? No, I didn't. I, I never asked. It didn't take much to get uh, Terry O'Reilly going. Yeah, or Mike. Or Mike. Mike, Mike had two hot temper- heads. Yeah, two hot heads yeah, for sure. And yeah. you know what? I don't think people realized how big Mike Milbury was. Like, yeah, there were two big guys throwing him. They were, they were, they were six foot two. They were pretty big guys. They were both thrown at So who broke it up? Did like did I went down and, and they we went from one end to the other and by the time we got down there they they Peter McDad probably was the peacemaker. Oh, I don't know what I, nobody go near them. I, I went there and bring it up, you guys, or something. I don't know. Well, I remember you weren't on the ice one time because uh, that was in Pittsburgh, I bet, right? That wasn't at the gardens, right? I don't know where that was. Yeah, that wasn't at the gardens because I remember you were saying it was all uh, water on the glass, fog on the glass, and you said the blood was mixing with the fog on the <laughs> glass and it looked like a Salvador Dali painting or something. But I was at the gardens and uh, you weren't on. You weren't on yet, and there were, some of the kids were skating. And Al Secord and John Winston got into a little fight. You, you, you were saying that when Winston was the guy that started. Yeah, Winston started. He kind of went up, and he he. From what I saw, I don't know. Secord said something to him, but John kind of slashed him, and then Secord kind of looked at him as if to say, "Like, are you serious? Like, what are you doing?" And then John whacked him again with the stick, and then they they fought. And was it a good fight? Uh, they were just, they were, they were kind of, the guys kind of jumped in quick. Like, yeah. like, uh, um, wasn't Secord sort of a rookie? Like he, he was, was a rookie and, uh, Bobby, Sh- I was near Bobby Schmatz and he says, your dad's not on the ice. You're the closest thing to the coach. You go break it up. <laughs> oh. And then, um, Schmatz and Cash were saying, let him go. And I think Peter <laughs> and Doki and those guys yeah, broke, they it broke it up. Yeah, they broke it up. They broke it up. They they were, they were the, uh. Uh, how would I say it? They were the, the elite, you know. They, they, they were the peacemakers. Peacemakers, yeah. 
They're the peacemakers it's of the like team. It's like when you have little when you have pit bulls and they're playing and playing. Like when you had your bull terrier and your staffy. Remember, remember the, <laughs> yeah, I had a they, bull terrier. You had a Staffordshire they're terrier. Playing they playing. They were playing, and then they kind of uh, got a little. And then it got got and, a little rough. Oh, and there was dust. Remember the dust? Yeah, they were and, going at it. You said break it up. I said I'm not sticking my hand <laughs> in there. Yep, they're, they're the past. They were sort of fighting. And, they, and, they, and luckily, they both had collars on, eh? Yeah. They both had collars on. Dad had to go, one, two, three, grab your dog. Because you know, <laughs> a bull terrier to stop for terror, you, you lose Boy, a hand. They, yeah. were, uh, they were really going at they it. They were at the point and, of no return. I, you think what, what happened was they were playing a little bit. Yeah. And a little bit, a little, little bit, a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and all of a sudden, boom! <laughs> That's what probably happened with Terry O'Reilly and Mike Milbury. That's what maybe, I, brought maybe, I never for. thought of that. Yeah, Terry kind of bumped him, and Mike bumped back, and he kind of got going. Yeah. So I, did you? You said you had a one fight. You remember when you were oh, in practice I, when in Springfield? I, when I was in Springfield, Punch Imlack was running the club, and he was on the ice, and I ca- I couldn't believe it that he did not uh, break it up. And we went, and we went, and we went. I, who, who were you fighting? I was fighting Tony Schneider. And boy, did he, he had a big head, boy. I, I was so tired at the end, honest, honest to God. I was so tired at the end, I couldn't pick up my gloves. If I had, yeah. if I had been over, I'd have fallen over. Because I remember you, we, uh, you and Brian Killery were having a session, and you guys were talking about that. And he, he said, Brian says, remember, I had to give you the stick, and you could barely hold your stick. I, ha- I, had, my, I had my gloves. And I had my stick. If somebody had to pass me the puck, I'd have fought, I, they'd have knocked my stick right out. And then all of a sudden, Tony ste- went to step over the boards to go in and get st- stitched up. And he and he felt his eye and he saw the blood and he and he, he, he made it sound like Tarzan. You know, no, geez, I tell you, I'll tell you, folks, when you're scared. So you, you went you out of like, No, we went on it a little bit and pushed and shoved, and we were too tired to go any further. So why do you think Punch let it let it go? I don't. I have no, I have no idea. And I, none of the guy, nobody jumped in. Nobody jumped in. And went, can I ask you if if Eddie Shore, because that was his team, if he had been coaching, do you think he would have broke you guys up? Like, yeah, I think he would have broke you think it up. Shore would have broke you up, but not yeah, Punch him. Not. Yeah, not Punch. I don't know why Punch. I guess he wanted to see who was the toughest. <laughs> Sure, I'll probably already knew. Well, he had to go in and get stitched. I didn't. That's right. So with say, with bringing up Eddie Shore, I'm not quite sure. How did that work in that? Why was Punch Imlac coaching uh, the Indians when it was or it was uh, Eddie Shore's team? Um, it, it's a funny deal. Punch Imlac was the general manager and coach. General manager and coach. I remember him calling me in, and uh, I, was, I was going for my money, and he said uh, you, uh, you're, you're, not, you're not arguing, but you want want some more money. I said, you're going to give me more money? And he said, no. I said, well, what am I arguing about? So anyhow, he was a general manager and coach, and I think Boston Bruins put him in there, and boy, did they. He was on the ice, and did he give it to Shore, and Shore give it right back to him. I'll never forget that. We just stood there. We were afraid of Shore. Now, why would we be afraid of Shore? Well, because we they knew if Punch Himalak no, left, he, no, he was going to be was, the coach again. <laughs> no, he, there, it was something about Shore that was that just an air about him, right? Just an air. He had that air about him that, and he was he wasn't very big. He was about five ten or something like that. And it was just he had an air about him. And there was something so, about him. so punching him would add it, and like was it kind of like who's going to be? Oh, he's and did Punch ever give it to him? And you know he backed down. He never and short turned around and walked away. He because, must have resented it though. Having oh, did he ever resent it? Then they sold it back to him the next year. I was there the next year. Yeah, and oh. then it was then you were punished. Now you're yeah, I pay. was punished. I I was just standing there. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't like me. So, Dad, we got a question from LinkedIn. We post our show. We get oh. some questions from LinkedIn. Wow, from who? LinkedIn. It's kind of another social media platform. From so. who? Oh yeah, I like it. <laughs> Mark Gilpin from LinkedIn uh, asked, Don, when did you first know you wanted to be a coach? Uh, Bob Clark phoned me up and asked me, do I, do, did I want to coach? I want to coach. I got $15,000, and everybody else, every other coach was getting about. Well, how, what was the other guys getting? About 40, about 40. Really? Yeah. They're, so they got you for less than half. No, oh, I remember Rose, she, she was drying dishes or something. And she said, you should phone and say you want to, 
you want to be general manager too. It's probably the only general manager you'll get along with. <laughs> I phoned up and I got him right back and I said, I'll be general manager too. I said, okay, how many, how many players we got? She says, one. I said, who? You. <laughs> I knew I had to be a coach because my family had to eat and I had no job. And boy, I had to win. Sydney Dad, I'd like to thank our sponsors, NorthstarBets.com. It's a Canadian-owned, and it's the best place to play in Canada. They have everything you're looking for, slots, live dealer tables, sports books with built-in sports betting insight and analysis. And listeners who already have an account with Spreads.ca, that was the original name, don't have to do anything, just sign in with NorthstarBets.com. And if you sign up with NorthstarBets.com, where they have an exclusive offer to our listeners. Sign up and deposit with the promo Cherry. NorthstarBets.com will match your first bet up to $100, and you get 100 bonus spins on the big wheel. And it's a limited time offer, and it's not available in Ontario. And we'd like to thank them for all the work they've done with the Don Cherry Pet Rescue Foundation. Yes, they certainly have. So Dad and Cindy came over last night and watched some hockey games, and uh, the we're flicking back and forth, and but there's... Leafs lost to Carolina, oh, but there that was four two. Does, that doesn't doesn't matter. Just get ready for the playoffs. That's all. Yeah, you, there was no way Carolina should have won that no, game. No. I don't think I've seen a team cough up the puck more. <laughs> Brenda Moore behind the bench. I think his hair got a little bit grayer. Yeah, but I think he tore a strip off him. They came back and won. Yeah, boy, they came back wouldn't in the third contri- period. Yeah, wouldn't you have contributed that from knowing that they really got an earful from? I don't their know. Coach? I don't know what it, what what did it, but they sure come back in the third period. And then the thing we were, then we were flicking back and forth. We were watching Vancouver and Washington, and yeah. and Vancouver got that that the, icing. That icing was ridiculous. The Vancouver got player was ahead of, of the Washington guy that was he was chasing that was chasing them. It should never should have been icing. Never should have been icing. And then they had to face off in the in the Vancouver end. That's when the winner was. Yeah. So that's the one thing we we were talking about is that the. The, oh, there's they, too, they, too many icings Too now. many icings now. And the face-off guys, throwing guys out, they said they'd learn. They don't learn. But because it's funny how, like you said, you were watching the Kingston uh, and the uh, Kingston and uh, Kitchener I was wa- again. Yeah. Kitchener, and you said the, the linesmen and refs were great. Just like in the old days, there was one referee. They'd go, they'd go four or five minutes without the... Yeah, that's the thing like the NHL. They just seem to put more rules in to, for the referees and the linesmen to blow the whistle more. And like last night, watching the the game in uh, in Edmonton with uh, with Colorado, and that was a good game. That was a good game. That, was, that had everything: fights and breakaways, penalty shots, overtime. And they would go. They were going about four or five minutes without a whistle, yeah. and everybody was going crazy. And the people, the broadcasters, were saying, "Well, this is great." It and is the good. NHL just seems, well, you know what? We're going to put on another rule for the referees to blow the whistle more. Yeah. I don't understand it. I, I just don't understand it. But don't don't most other sports try to speed, speed up, the up the game? Speed up the game, yeah, like and baseball. And it just seems the NHL just slows it down. It, it's ridiculous, the icing is yeah. right now. So there's about three weeks left, Dad, in the in the, in the the season. Like, will you, would you, what would you be doing to try to get ready for the playoffs? Well, I never, I didn't, I didn't do anything. That's, I, because I, I started right at training camp putting the lines together, and that's why we always got off to a great start because we had the lines together. Usually, you left lines together in the last three weeks. So can I ask, in three weeks out, would you know what goalie you're going to go with? Oh, I knew what goalie I was going to go with. Yeah, like, do you, like, you know, he... Cheevers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah. So Samson off, he got, he got beat last night, 5-4. Well, it was 4-4, then he got, he got beat in the shootout. Um like, do you think Keith knows who he's going to start? Like, do you think he's he got He knows, it? he knows. Well, no, I don't know now. I, I, I think he's going to go with the hot hand. Yeah, so he's got to keep going back and forth. Got to keep going back and forth. He just can't stick with the one guy. If he sticks with the one guy, that's the guy he's got to go with. 